other authors are struggling with the same thing. Like there's another author who's got a mailing list and a site and they're struggling to find how to branch out. And that's, that's why you want to do this is because it's, it's, you're tapping into other audiences. So hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Isan. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 116 of the podcast. It's May 31st, 2023, as we record this. And today we're talking about marketing with other authors. Mm. Uh, we have a new patron this week, Sherry Lynn Clark. Thank you also to our Thank existing you, Sherry. patrons and believing in us and in the podcast. I wanted to read out her book description. She's cool. taking advantage of the uh, the announcement, the free announcement that you can do if you are a patron of the podcast. So her um, women's fiction novel is called True Strength. There's going to be a link in the show notes where you can buy it on Amazon, but she also has it on her website as well. And that website is author SLC, which is Sherry Lynn Clark. So author SLC.com. And the name of the book is True Strength. The description is, after Marissa's only child died and her husband abandoned her, it took her six grueling years to rebuild her life. She used Shorinji Kempo, a Japanese martial art, to help her work through her grief. Through martial arts, she found the confidence to advance in her career, restore old friendships and build new ones, as well as a possible love interest, something she never thought she would want again. But then all of that is threatened when her estranged husband returns. He seems determined, desperate to have her back in his life, and he's not afraid to cause physical harm to get what he wants. Will she find the strength and courage to fight back both physically and mentally, or will her warring emotions break her? Mm. So thanks to Sherry Lynn for, uh, for becoming a patron and I hope you all will go to check out True Strength, link in the show notes. There's also um, a free short story for folks um, that includes a scene of Marissa going to the martial arts class for the first time. And that's not in the book and you can't get it anywhere else. So again, the website is authorslc.com. So up the author update, um, last week, um, I bought a class called mm. AI for Authors by Joseph Michael. He's the Scrivener coach. I want to see if and how I can use ChatGPT as an author tool in my business. Um, and once the class is out of beta, I'll have an, an affiliate link for, it, for to the class for you. But I think the registration might be closed now, but you can check it out and get on the waiting list or something like that if you want. So Joseph Michael, the Scrivener coach is just done a new course. So I'm going to check it out and not stick my head in the sand about AI and just check it out. And I can't have an opinion unless I understand it fully. I've been playing around a little bit with chat GPT for, um, you know, just seeing what it can do and it's fun to play with, but you know, I want to see if right. I can actually use it as a tool and and I've been doing a lot of socializing this through this long weekend. So I'm kind of tired. <laughs> Mm. peopled out a little bit but uh um and then but yet you're here you're I here. am here yay I do like people <laughs> just I, me too have been, but uh, they wear me out every single day doing something with somebody else um and I think I mentioned last week that I was working with convert kids um creator network which is also in beta so there's a, a link in the show notes for that as well if you want to, it's, so this is kind of maybe a little bit of a lead in for our topic later. So it's Ooh. not really marketing with other people, but kind of it is. So it's a recommendation yeah. engine. So we can talk a little bit more about that later. What about you? What's your author update? Oh uh, boy. What have I been doing? I, so I'm still kind of in the, what am I going to do? I, I've got two books, like I've said, that are in the, in the rewriting phase and kind of at a place with both of them where like I have to decide how to how to proceed and I'm I'm waffling a little bit not waffling just I haven't really figured out how I want to go about doing it um my beta my writers group has has read the second 
a book in the chronology. The first book has not been read by anybody but me. So I'm debating, like, I think I'm going to beg my writer's group to be beta readers on that book. <laughs> to mm -hmm. say, like, I know you're reading two chapters of every other week of this book, but why don't you read the one that comes before it? I, I don't know. <laughs> like, we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't really decided what I'm doing. Actually, I keep putting off making that decision. Um, but in the meantime, I've had this short, I've been working on a short screenplay that I've had like half finished for a long time. Um, I actually have a friend that's going to, tomorrow, he's going to um, produce a film with his, with his, um, with his film production crew. And we've been talking about it for a while. And it got me, I used to make movies all the time. And, and it got me thinking about this short that I had incomplete on my desktop. And so I've finished, I've been kind of finishing that putting the uh the finishing touches the polish on it figuring out who i'm going to send it to i, I would like to make a movie again mm -hmm. sometime see how that you know that was a big part of my life probably 20 years ago and i still enjoy it i still listen to podcasts and i still watch the dvd extras when it comes to mm -hmm. you know how we made this movie it still gets me excited so yeah so that that project i've been working and there's a lot of unfinished things on my desk so I'm, i think i'm going to take some of this little indecisive time to finish things off mm, that's a great idea finish off all the little bits and bobs as as the english say <laughs> the bits and bobs right bits yeah there's bobs. a bunch of them so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna knock out a few of them and see if they don't go anywhere but yeah. what are you reading i so i finished um just oh, kids, just kids. Uh -huh. god such a great book nice. oh man just like this depiction of new york city it's just a depiction of a world that's not there anymore mm -hmm. and i think we all romanticize and up to the very end was just touching and heartfelt and so like you don't even have to know who patty smith and robert maplethorpe are to just get sucked into this like nice like romantic and platonic love story mm -hmm. um so yeah, highly recommended book, super good. And now I'm reading something called Burning Air by Aaron Kelly, um, The Burning Air. It's uh, another sort of domestic uh, thriller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, mom. And <laughs> <laughs> she's got a she's got boxes of them. She's got but she will she's got boxes of them that are like on top of other boxes of them she didn't remember. So yeah, this is again just kind of like a British uh domestic thriller seems like it's about a family coming back together after a long time and something has happened that's a familiar trope but we'll see where it goes what about you i <laughs> this is crazy i'm still reading the invisible life of Addie larue i'm really really enjoying it and i have finally like cleared off all of the other little books that i was reading so now every time i'm reading it is this book so i'm getting through it faster <laughs> than i have been before right um, I'm about three quarters of the way through, I think. Um, and it's really getting good and I'm really enjoying it. So cool good plug. Yep. Invisible. Life yeah. I'm, the room. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to hear how, when that one's going to be done. Did you, have you read it? No, but like you've been reading it for a while and usually, you know, a little, usually a little I summer. read through faster than. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's usually like a little summary at the end that gives me a good idea of what you're, what it was about, but I'm still, still waiting still waiting well the blurb so here was my one um like I said I don't know exactly how far through it I am I'm definitely past the midpoint mark um and so the blurb gave away like the midpoint um turning point I guess mm -hmm. um and so I kept like to me, that is the inciting incident, you know, like the thing right. that, and it says it right in the blur, I'll tell you, but um, I just expected it to happen much, much sooner. So, so that's the only part that I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Like all of this beforehand right. was necessary for character development and, you know, plot. And so it goes back and forth between uh, 2014 in New York and, um, like 1794 or something like that in uh France. And the woman, Addie Lou is in both timelines. So she's been cursed and she is uh forgettable. 
Nobody ever remembers her after they um, walk away. So if I okay meet you at a coffee Weird. shop and then I see you later that day at a party, I will have no memory of you whatsoever and I'll have to meet you all over again. So, so that's what she's living with. And um, on the front cover or the, you know, the book description, it's, you know, says she's going through all this life and then um, somebody remembers her. Oh, so that that's the hook. Well, I thought that was the hook, you know, like that was it's why not. I, well, that's I mean, to me, a hook happens at the beginning of the book. You know what I mean? Oh, true. So true, true. so that has just recently happened. So that's like the middle of the book. Somebody remembers her so you do need to experience what her life is like being this forgettable person and not being able to right. leave your mark on the world and not having a home and you know she can't have any possessions nothing you know she does not leave a mark on the world so mm. she can't have a cell phone she can't have like nothing nothing works if she's touching on the screen like she doesn't make any difference to the world so Weird. living with that for hundreds and hundreds of years and just how that would wear you down. And so it's an uh, interesting, you know, character study too. And it goes back, like I said, back and forth between, you know, when it first happens and then after 300 years of living, living with it, you know, and, and different perspectives and stuff. So it's all interesting. And now midpoint, someone knows who she, or remembers her, doesn't know who she is, but you know, she's now having a relationship of a different right. kind for the first time in hundreds right. of years. So anyway, it's uh, that's interesting. That's very Twilight Zone. That's very yeah. it's got a Twilight Zone feel to but it. But I'm me. again, I'm surprised that they, I mean, it is the hook. That's why, why you would read the story. Like, oh my God, what would happen if this were your life and then someone suddenly remembered who you were? That's fascinating. But again, right. I would have thought that would have come much earlier in the book and it didn't. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. You ready to segue? I think we're ready to segue. So, um, marketing with other people. Marketing with other people. And I guess we should caveat that with like what we're talking about is, is the collaborative efforts that a person would do in order to market. So, we've gone through marketing basics, we've gone through like, you know, marketing from the ground up. We've talked about marketing that we own. We've we've talked a lot about marketing on this podcast because it is one of those topics that is evergreen long term, yes. but also like everybody's talking about it and and want, you know, with every book it's different. With every, you know, place you are in your author journey, it's different. And sometimes you would you would do the kind of marketing like paid advertising. And sometimes you're not in your author journey or book journey where that's, you know, viable, you know, maybe you don't have the budget for it. So we've talked about marketing in, in lots of different ways, but we've never talked about how to, how to um, do it with another person on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> on right. purpose, you know? <laughs> well, and, and let's sort of tag this on to the next, to the last stuff we talked about. One of those realities is that when you market your your blog your your stuff like there's a there's a lot you can do for yourself right there's you can build a website you can build that website so that it's seo optimized you can run a regular blog uh you can use social media to broadcast what you're doing and those are all very like tried and true practices that are going to work there happens to be other things that you can do after that where you're marketing kind of you're doing things with other people that also signal to you know google to to audiences that you're out there so i think that once an author has kind of created the 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 foundation um that being a strong website or a strong you know newsletter or what have you and you're marketing it to your people, there comes a time when it just is advantageous to market it, to start marketing it out to and start swapping with other people because it, it begins to feel marketing when you get into it at a certain point, it begins to feel like you're kind of in a silo, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like, I'm talking to my people. I'm talking to these people. And, and what you should realize, I realize is that 
there's a silo right next to you where mm -hmm. other authors are struggling with the same thing. Like there's another author who's got a mailing list and a site and they're struggling to find how to branch out. And that's, that's why you want to do this is because it's, it's, you're tapping into other audiences. So I don't know where, which you'd like to like, where you'd like to begin. I mean, there's a lot of places to go. My first thought is always like the, the newsletter swap since yes. we were talking, mm -hmm. you know, about, um, our new patron. And I actually just went on and signed up for, for her mailing list, um, while we were talking. Me too. And <laughs> you did too. Oh my gosh. Yes. So there we go. I love it. I love it. This is, this is, this is how it works. Um, <laughs> So when you have that mailing list, this is that is a perfect example of how to build it organically. You go through, you, 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 you seek marketing opportunities, but there will come a point when it's advantageous to go outside. So newsletter swaps are now back in the old days. Before I, this is a real like talk about a caveat. It used to be in the old days that people would sell their newsletter. Uh, subscribers like this used to be a very common practice where like i if i had a mailing list of 10,000 uh women's fiction subscribers and another author wanted they like i could sell that to them and that was considered um well that was considered okay that is no longer okay so when we say swap this isn't you taking your list and then giving the whole list to someone to put onto their mailing list a mail letter swap is more along the lines of Hey, you've got your mailing list and I have mine. Why don't I'll introduce my mailing list to you and you introduce me to your mailing list. And so this is just an opportunity to, as if you are an authority to your mailing list, like your mailing list has been hearing from you. They, they like your books. They like what you have to say about the genre. You're coming to them with, Hey, this is a cool new author. Why don't you check them out? that can be really advantageous to that that author right that can be a really big boom to them those are new subscribers they've been proven i, I don't know if that's the right they've been proven to be um you know active strong subscribers uh to that other person's mailing list and they could very well be that for you so let's talk just a teeny bit about the logistics of newsletter swaps like how you find someone else to do this with i mean we've talked a little bit about the organic part you know like right. you're in your silo and then oh my writer group has this other mystery author and right. they're in their own silo too so hey let's you know you're networking at that point and you actually know a person and right. you can you can set up that organic kind of newsletter swap like you just said but then there are you know there are the global There's a lot ones. of other ways. Yeah. yeah. So how else do you do it besides the organic? Hey, you're a writer too. Let's swap. <laughs> well, I would go. So just to, to go a little further on that one, I think it's like, that's always going to be your best. Okay. And so you want to, you want to use those as much as you can. I think it's important to also, um, this is, this is how I would use social media the most like, I think it's the most advantageous way as an author. I've used advantageous like five times. I've used that word a million times. Get me a thesaurus. <laughs> um, but I think it's really, it's beneficial. There's there's my thes brain thesaurus working. It's beneficial to get on those groups of like a, a mystery authors on, on Facebook or uh, like whatever that group is that you can be a part of. Like that, those are people looking to market. So if you're going to reach out just at, in the first level of anonymity, I would go to those. Find authors in groups of the similar genre that are working in the same way and and ask them. Um, if you're a subscriber to something like Book Funnel, Story Origin, um, Author XP, I think does it too. Um, those are places you can just sign up for newsletter swaps. Uh, authors will go on to these services. They'll list, you know, I'm Eric Mertz. I have a paranormal mystery um mailing list it's 4000 people my open rate is 30% i mean people so, want to see that you have a, no a list with numbers and with with percentages and so you're setting uh, up an author profile on those places yeah if you okay. if you're a subscriber to either any one of those services you'll have something of a profile they're all very different um story origins a little more like a social media profile where somebody could come on and explore you 
Um, whereas authors XP is really not like that. But regardless, you have it's you set yourself up to use their tools, and then basically what you're doing is just kind of putting a call out there. Um, you put the call out, people sign up for your mailing list, or sorry, for your your newsletter swap, and then you just execute. You know, you just get with that person and say, "All right, I'm gonna I have a newsletter coming out on June fifteenth. I'll put you on that." You know, and then. And, and there's some really specific things people look for, exclusivity. I mean, that's something you're going to want. You don't necessarily want to be one of 10 authors featured on a mailing list. You, you know, there's some people out there that are, I don't want to say like they're, th there's like a lack of personal touch, but there's a lot of people out there who are churning as much of this as they can. You know, they're going to list 10 people if they can get 10 people because they want to, they're trying to build that list really fast. You might not want that. I don't want that. So I, I seek people who are more exclusive, like, hey, you'll be the, I'll feature you. Um, and I think it's, newsletter swaps are a great way to, again, you're not going to get the same numbers that you get if you go out and like just do, you know, kind of like the, the group promos. We'll talk about that in a moment. Group promos get you big numbers, but the people you get from newsletter swaps are generally these are the, the readers that that other author has cultivated over a long period of time. They're legit. They've been here for a while. They actually buy books. You want those people. They've done mm -hmm. some of the weeding out for, for you. So, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if this is, uh, if this fits nicely into any of, of what you're planning on talking about, but I also know that from personal experience too, that if you as a reader sign up for um, one of these um, newsletter swaps, I guess, how do I say that? So at the end of your newsletter, Eric, author, right. <laughs> you have um, these like a banner where right. you can click on, you know, spooky stories for October or whatever. And, and if right. I enter my email address into that, then I receive the Tell, tell us how that works on, on the, on the reader end. So that's generally the same incentive you would use to sign up a newsletter subscriber anywhere else. Okay. When I go on someone else's, I give them, here's the link to my free book. Okay. Here's the thing that I'm promoting. Um, and I, you can promote anything you can promote. This is my, my permanently free book. This is my sale book. This is my, you can kind of do whatever, whatever works for you. Um, I have a guy that I've swapped with a bunch of times and he's definitely got something different all the time. Um, sometimes it's his permanent, mostly it's his permanent free book, but there's often like, this is my sale book. This is this. So I, he's just looking for other opportunities for, to, to get other material out there. But in general, that's what it is. It's just, you're going to appear as the author, you're going to appear on someone's newsletter in whatever format they are, you know, they, they use, it's going to be, Hey, check out Eric Mertz writes these things, check him out. This is you know, here's his free book and here's a little bit about him. And then, you know, there'll be that button, get that free book. They'll then go into your, um, into that funnel where they click, they download the book and then their email comes into your onboarding sequence and away they go. It's the same thing that would happen if they were doing a promotion, only it's more targeted uh, to that person's mailing list. So my experience as a reader with what I assumed was a newsletter swap was, I put my email address in to get this book from this author that I was following. And then my email address went to everybody else that was in that. Maybe this is a bundle that I'm thinking of. So that would be like a, a promotion. Swap. Okay. That would be so, it. So it's slightly different. Okay. So before we talk about that, I guess the important right. part I wanted to put out there and you've hinted at it already is is making sure that these people are in your genre but maybe oh, yeah. also in like the subgenre because as oh, a consumer yeah. like i got a whole bunch of you know i got put on somebody a whole bunch of other people's lists that i wouldn't necessarily have had right. read because it was yes it was in the genre but like you know maybe maybe you read um paranormal um, romance, maybe that's your jam, and you got put on just this generic romance list. Yeah, and the, the, now bil you've the billionaire got military, bad boy. Yeah, right. yeah. So 
be be when you're looking to sign up for these newsletter swaps, really look for um, this the sub genre so that when Absolutely. you are telling your personal list, hey, check this out, it's really cool that you're not sending them to places that they wouldn't read, then you're right. going to lose credibility with your audience. I think it's fair if you're an author to, you have to be discerning. I agree a hundred percent. You have to look at that, your list and look at the person asking to get on your swap and say, hmm, this is not. But if you feel like if you write paranormal romance and the other person, you know, maybe it's Regency romance is what they do or something like that. I mean, it's up to you how far you want to, because not everybody on your list is going to be exclusively one mm -hmm. subgenre, mm -hmm. but you have a great point. If you do paranormal romance, that sort of bad boy billionaire, you know, romance and there's God, the romance talk about sub genres. I don't right. know how people wrote like market romance because it's so subgenred out. Um but and you've got you like really... clean romance too versus spicy like yeah there's Christian that romance, steamy too. romance, spicy like yeah steamy and spicy are different things. And, <laughs> and that's where people like that's where that author you're relying on that author to be specific. They need to know what their subgenres are, what their readership is and whether or not that's a fit. So it's a good point. I think what you got into, and this is a segue, is to a group promotion. Um, group promotions for me have been the baseline um, for building a mailing list. It's it's inefficient as far as like getting good subscribers. It's efficient in getting large numbers. Um, it's a great way just to get whoever is out there. But the way it works very similarly. So instead of um, swapping between newsletters, you are an author will create a promotion. That promotion will be, I can probably find an email in a, in a second advertising one of these, but it's it will be a, hey, I'm doing a, a promotion in the month of June for paranormal romance authors, send me a full book and I'm gonna, and so then those that promoter will take all those books, put them in a big banner ad or something and promote it through a site. And those authors then, take you know there's a master link to the promotion and then they go in and then they'll advertise that to their mailing list or they'll advertise it on social media wherever else and people who are people see the ad they click on the book they can download all the free books that they want and every one of the free books that they download goes to the same newsletter funnel um so this would be, that's probably what you did. You clicked on something. There was 70 books, 70 mm -hmm. authors marketing it. Once you put your email in it, boom, every one of those authors got your email and they put you in their funnels and away they went. Mm -hmm. It's for that reason, it's very inefficient. If you as an author go look at these promotions and look at the books that you're promoting with, let's say it is paranormal romance. You might look at 75 other books in this promotion and maybe 15 of them will be in your genre where it'll say the covers, you know, it's got the, the cover really matters here because if someone's downloading books and they're looking for paranormal romance and your book looks like, oh, that looks like a clean Christian romance or cow, you know, what's the, the Western or, you know, rural romance, they're mm -hmm. not going to download it. So, but the point is, yeah, you get on there and you, you, and then as the author, you'll get a thousand emails in an, in a, in a, um, Excel file and you add those to your mailing list, highly Wait. inefficient, but big so numbers. So when you get that, have you, have you done that personally? I do. I probably do. I do like three to five of those every month. I'm just running one all the time. And it's what it's, it's I put them at the bottom of my email. Um, the group newsletter. promo you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I do a group. Yeah. And it's so a simple... when you get a whole bunch of people that deluge, you know, like into your, into your mailing, into mailer light, are you going through and cleaning that up on a regular basis or does that kind of self-resolve and they just unsubscribe at the point that they don't? I like clean the not mailing a list. Fit? Yeah. I mean, I clean the mailing list myself periodically, probably like every six months. Um, but however, there is a natural weeding out of that, you know, you put people through the funnel, people unsubscribe while they're in that, that onboarding sequence, 
they'll unsubscribe on your first email um, because it's just not something they want. Or they're a free seeker, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just someone who wants free books and and they're going to fill their Kindle with free books and they're never going to buy anything. And that's fine. It's it's, But your numbers there, if you look at just by pure percentages, I should look, I have the stats somewhere. It's a pretty dismal percentage. So if, if 25% of the people who subscribe to your author swap uh, efforts become good readers, you know, regular readers, regular openers, newsletter readers, people who buy books, it's probably eight to 10% on a promotion. So that's a pretty small number. It's not great. But when you're starting out and you're trying to build those numbers, Mm -hmm. it's almost a necessary evil to do some mass work. I guess, I mean, it's just- And you do three to five a month? I do probably three a month, actually. I've tried- I brought it down because one of the things, so here's something that you need to know as an author, your reputation here matters. What makes these promotions work, whether or not that's a group promotion or a newsletter swap is you are relying on that other person to follow through. Here's a bulletin board, people, you know, that you should, uh, on all collaborative efforts, not everybody does what they say they're going to (laughs) do. And sometimes you get into a newsletter swap And you say, okay, you're going to promote my newsletter on June 1st. And then you go look at your stats for June 1st and nobody signed up for your newsletter. They probably didn't promote it. Mm -hmm. Or that newsletter or or that, sorry, that group promo goes out and that relies on people promoting it. Like Mm -hmm. if people don't promote the group newsletter or sorry, the group promotion, nobody's ever going to see it. So Mm -hmm. everyone's relying on everyone else. There are people who just don't. I've, I have run group promotions with 50 authors and just kept track and probably 10% of them just don't promote it. So you re- your reputation matters and most of these websites like Book Funnel, Story Origin, Authors XP to a lesser extent, they keep track of your reputation. When you go and ask to join a promotion, that person who runs the promotion can look and say, oh, they share this. I'll let them on my promotion. Mm-hmm. If your reputation is bad and it says, hey, this person doesn't do what they say they're going to do they're not going to let you on the the promotion and they shouldn't let you on the promotion because you're not you're not doing what you said you're going to do so it's good to be transparent if you have a really small list if you got 50 people and they're and that's it and you sign up i would just be really frank with the promoter and say hey i've only got 50 people but i will promote it i will get that's how you build your reputation Mm -hmm. people get to trust you so it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you have to go for volume at a certain point. Um, at this point, most readers are inundated with with email marketing. They're this is just how they're targeted. So you really have to do a lot of weeding out and 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 that kind of thing. So what is the difference between newsletter swaps and group promos, though? They sound very similar to me. They're they're very similar. You start with the same link. In a newsletter prom, in a newsletter swap, I am approaching you. Hey, Valerie, you write the same thing. I like Valerie Brooks, mm-hmm. fellow Oregon author. We did a newsletter swap. I gave her my link. She gave me hers, and I promoted her book to my list, and she promoted my book to her list. Mm-hmm. That was a simple, straight across. Like we're now buddies, and let's promote each other's stuff. Actually, we're gonna do a lot of stuff together because she's my people, and I like mm-hmm. her. Um, a, a group promo will be, I just go on to one of these, I go on to um, book funnel every morning and, or sorry, every Thursday morning and just look at it and say, all right, there's a promo that I can be in. I sign up for it. It puts my link into this group promo and the other 50 authors and I, once the promo starts running, market it. We just put it out in our newsletters, put it out on social media, offer it wherever we can and build up those numbers. So it's it's similar. It's a collaborative effort. Just the newsletter swap is more personal. It's like a highlighted feature on you versus something more anonymous and uh, yeah. And part of a group of 70 other authors or something like that. So then bundles, that was the other thing. So bundles sound like it's kind of like that group promotion actually. It's but- very similar, very similar. 
a bundle will be a group promotion where instead, so when a group promotion that I'm ta was just talking about is you click on this, the page that has the group promotion on it. And there's, let's say 75 books. And I'm using that number, just like pulling that number out of the air, but that's about how big these promotions are. And you'll just see 75 covers and you'll click on the ones you want, like, oh, I want that one and that one and that one. You click on it. It takes you off board to a, to that author's um, free book page and you click on it. So you, mm -hmm. you, it would take a little time, but you could download all 75 of those books and you'd have them. It's different in a, in a, the bundle is that's where you sign up, you, you add your name to the list. This is what happened to you. And then a month at the end of the month, whenever that promotion is done, the, you get emailed all 75 of those books in a bundle and you've just been added to 75 mailing lists like that. So there's less, you don't have any control as the reader um, over what gets clicked on and what doesn't. There is the risk in the promotion, right? Because again, the, the all the reader is doing is opening up a page which features all the book covers that are in the promotion. There's a chance if your book doesn't match the promotion that you might not get any clicks. There's a chance, right? You might not get as many clicks as others. Um, However, in a bundle, you're guaranteed you're going to, and I, I join a bundle every three months. There's a good on authors XP. There's a mystery detective, um, paranormal bundle. I get, I think it's about six to 700 emails every time. And, and, and you do that. How often I'm just taking notes here. Like every three to four months, she runs, um, Amy Van Sant runs authors XP and she runs a book bundle. She runs a book bundle every month, but it's a different genre. So there's the mm -hmm. romance book bundle, you know, the, but she runs a detective and mystery, detective mystery and paranormal bundle. Again, 700, six, 700 new subscribers all at once, but the open percentage is fairly low on those. Still, you're, I've, I've gotten some loyal readers out of those. So for the price of joining, a, the bundles will cost money. Okay. But to to join a bundle will cost money. Promotions and author swaps are free. Um, we're getting close to the end, but I do want to mention um, blog swaps. Okay. Blog swaps for more of your nonfiction. Your 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 blog are key because this is where I have a blog on my website, you have a blog on your website, and we agree, I will write a blog as a guest blogger on your website, you write a guest blog on my site. So that means you're gonna give me an article that I'm gonna put on my website with your name on it. It's like, hey, everyone, Valerie's gonna talk about this, and then it'll be your content, and featured at the end of that is the link to your website. And then usually when I do a blog swap, I do it with, yeah, someone like I will then write the blog for their website. Mm -hmm. These are incredibly valuable if you're in the nonfiction space because Google really likes what's called a, it's a link. It's a, called a backlink. The link that you put on your blog that goes on my site, Google loves because that shows that your website is credible. Like, oh, Eric's website put a link to Valerie's website on it. Valerie's website must be legitimate. So that gives you a boost. Same thing on the other way around. When my link goes on your site, it says, wow, Eric's site must be legitimate. He's on her website. That's called backlinking. And that's an incredibly powerful way to cool. draw not only the people who read your blog, who see, oh, wow, this person, Valerie, sounds cool. I'm going to get in touch with her. It works for that, that direct like person-to-person -person marketing, but in that sort of bigger and tangible sharing the marketing burden of like building SEO power, mm -hmm. you want that as well. Because again, Google looks at it like um, really, really big. And the bigger the website that you're sharing with, the better it is for you. So there's something called domain authority. We won't get into that, but basically domain authority is Google. Google's look at your website and it's like, how much authority do you really have? We're going to put a number on it. Like, CNN has a you know an authority mm -hmm. of like a hundred because everybody knows it's the biggest news site in the world or one of the biggest news sites in the world. So if if you were to put a blog on CNN's website, Google would love that because you're like, oh, you must really be legitimate because this website that has all this power is linking to you. That's incredible. So 
I'm not going to, I wouldn't tell anybody to go out and seek to link with other, like you have to be a prestigious site. It's good just to meet with your peers. Like even if your sites have about the same traffic, it's still a boost to both of you to share a blog with other people. And if you have a regular readership on your blog, they like you and they trust you. It's good to show that you trust other people. It's just good personal marketing. So if you're, even if you're just, even if you're an author, this can still help you because you're sharing, again, you're sharing some of that marketing burden with someone else. You'll get a regular weekly blog taken care of, written by somebody else on your site. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it win works win. for everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. So much more to say, but we've run out of time. So uh, yeah, if you've got any questions or ideas, please, please hit us up um, on the Facebook group page writer craft um or you can email us writercraftpodcast at gmail.com thanks for talking I, I was, with me well i was gonna say as a last note just like these are definitely some proceed with caution areas mm -hmm. uh, marketing with people is great because nine out of ten people are great and you will love the experience and there'll be relationships that you that you treasure like i said about valerie brooks mm -hmm. such a great relationship already but you do need to worry about there are some people out there that are just not community based. They're just trying to get numbers mm -hmm. and you you don't want someone building numbers on your back. You really want to share the load. So if you do have questions, please send them because it if you're getting into something that feels icky or like, you know, too salesy or not personal or someone's kind of treating you like that, like just be very aware. It's, it's real. I've been taken advantage of too. So. All right. Words to live by. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you should write a book. Words to live by, by Eric. Words. <laughs> it's just a bunch of quips, you know, just a bunch of things I've Deep said. Deep thoughts by Jack Andy. <laughs> De oh gosh. Don't get me started. I'm not going to stop laughing all day. Okay. Start talking all right. Deep thoughts. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was me. fun. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye for now. Bye-bye.